The Lagos state government has said four children from the same family and their teacher who arrived the country from the United States of America, USA, have been quarantined for coronavirus. Commissioner for Health, Professor Akia Bayomi, disclosed this at a meeting, at a media briefing rather, saying another man from the United Kingdom was also isolated. It revealed that the four children and a teacher were quarantined because they had contact with a coronavirus patient adding that they were isolated at the center in Yaba two days ago to see if they would develop symptoms of the virus. Disclosing that though the first test had been conducted on them and tested negative, he stated that another test would be conducted within 48 hours for final confirmation. Abayomi also said a man from the United Kingdom who had been quarantined would have tests conducted on him today to ascertain his status, stressing that the state government was carrying out regular tests on people to ascertain their coronavirus status on a daily basis. Joining us in the studio to discuss this public health um, issue is a public health specialist, Dr. Flora Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, this conversation is ongoing and it seems it's going to remain in the headlines for quite a bit. Um, what do you make of the media coverage so far? In Nigeria? Yes. Well, everywhere you turn to, you see COVID, you know, being talked about. So I think the coverage is quite high. Um, both in Nigeria and outside Nigeria. I mean, it's, it's the news right now, and perhaps it's somewhat adequate, yes. Okay, is it, is, it, is it a good thing, or do you think it is amplifying the nature or exaggerating a bit the nature of this infection? Because we do see stats that say the common flu kills more. Uh, we have other um, infections that kill more than the coronavirus. Okay, so in Nigeria, um, I would say that the information or the news around is not enough to cause a panic, and it's quite not sensational. In other countries where this epidemic or this pandemic is really rife, um, there's a whole lot more noise. In Nigeria, if you ask me, I think we probably need to talk a whole lot more about it. Not just talk, but give adequate information, more information. A lot of people still don't know a lot about um, COVID-19, and I think that's a bit of a challenge right now. Is there a latest update aside from what we have that you might be aware of? So a lot of the updates have to do with the number of cases, the number of deaths, perhaps to a smaller extent, number of people who have recovered. But we need more updates on, especially in Nigeria, on what to do, what to prepare for. I mean, yes, we do not have an epidemic per se now, but many other countries that are suffering today did not have this epidemic they're having three months ago. So we need to prepare a bit more, which I think is, um, needs a bit more work, really. Yeah, so rated, what areas do you think needs more work? Because as it stands, we do know that Lagos state government has been in the fore trying to educate people and show how prepared you know, they've been, uh, they have become and continue to be for the coronavirus. So what other aspects do you think needs more work? Okay, so truly, like you say, the Lagos state government especially and the Nigeria, Nigeria CDC, They've, worked, um, they've been working quite actively to get a lot of things done. So I, I, I know some of the things they're doing. So I'll say, number one, communication. There's been a lot of information out there on COVID in terms of the spread, um, the, the symptoms to expect, um, some of the prevention measures to put in place. I'm also aware that in Lagos State especially, there's been a lot of trainings going on for health workers to increase the index, index of suspicion and capacity um, in terms of what to do and then infection control measures to, to deploy in their various facilities. I'm also aware that recently they've been deploying um, some treatment algorithms and some protocols to some hospitals, which is good. And of course, surveillance has been quite high and um, contact tracing, especially for the current index cases that we have. And this is fantastic. This is the first stage. So, okay. 
but then there's still a whole lot more to do. There's still, there's still number one, the need to have um, resources available to be deployed as at when they're required. I think it's just um, um, released over 600 million naira to yes. the NCDC. Yes, and um, yes, so let, I'm looking at it from this angle. So China, for instance, um, not too long after they started having the problem, um, were able to build two hospitals within 10 days. Now, to do that, they did not wake up one day and just decide to do that. They had put in place some things. So they were able to, they could easily mobilize resources and have them approved and released. They could easily mobilize human resources, people, construction, different teams from various sectors to go in there and make this happen. If these things were not on ground prior to that time, do you think they would have been able to build the hospital even if they had money allocated for that? I don't think so. So some of these things were pre-planned. There are structures and systems set in place that could be activated as at when required. Do you think that we have that here already? Do you think we do? I put the question to you. Okay, so we, 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 we know the challenges in our system. We know we are trying. We know there's a lot of effort being made. And even the people making this effort, sometimes you can see their despair and, and frustration because it's like they're working we're working in a system that does not exist. So you have pockets of people, individuals, organizations, agencies, government establishments, trying in their own little ways, hospitals, to do what they can. But the truth of the matter is, it, you, there's only so much you can do when structures and systems so are So we not need in place. like long-term planning. We need, need, need short-term, medium, ter medium term and long-term planning. We need things to be in place. Things, structures you can activate when you require them, not put in place when the when need arises. Need what more, in your opinion, can we do when it comes to detection? Because we do know that there are some people out there that might have had contact with these people that are yet to be identified. Yeah. So um, some of the questions I ask is this. Assuming we begin to have a whole lot more cases, do we have things in place to manage patients? You see, you reduce your case fatality rates. You bring it down when you're able to keep people alive, right? If we do have... If we do have, we're, we're trying our best right now to, to prevent the spread by contact tracing and all, but again, there's, there are a lot of cases that may pass by us without us realizing that they exist. And by the time we find out, the next thing would be to support them and help them get better, right? Now, the question is, do we have things in place? So if you look at other countries that are going through this, remember, before December, no country in the world had gone through COVID, right? Um, so everybody's learning from those who have been through it. So even our learning here in Nigeria is from those who are currently undergoing it. 80% of, um, or 20% of the people who, who, 80 percent of the people who have COVID may have mild illness, but 20% will require some large amount of care, right? In, you, because they're quite severe. And to manage these people, you would need things like ventilators, you would need good PPEs available, you would need intubation, you would need extracorporeal oxygenation. Do we have these things? The truth of the matter is if these things are not available, these people are likely to die. And then if they're not, if patients are not well cared for, even those with mild to moderate illness will blow up into severe cases. And then when it's so complicated, you can't manage them and then you have more people dying. So there's still much more So there's still do. a whole lot more, especially regarding being ready to support treatment. treatment. Yes. Okay, let, let's look at meats. Um, amazingly, I had a conversation with someone you would expect that would know and some other people. Um, I had a guest here speak a little, a doctor as well, speak about the meats that has been going around. But there's one that refuses to go away. The talk about how the weather in Africa will make it um, unconducive for the virus to thrive. Um, the, the doctor talked about the fact that it's only for those on surface areas and not for, you know, interpersonal uh, interaction. What's your take on it? Right. So again, there's a lot we don't know. 
So a lot of what we know right now is either speculative or from studies that are currently ongoing and are not even conclusive. Now, when, when I, I also smile when people say, oh, our temperature is going to kill coronavirus. Coronavirus cannot survive the Nigerian weather. And then some even say maybe genetics, right? Maybe yes. may, may what is, yeah. but there are people, there are Nigerians. But the rains are, are already here. <laughs> now I say to people, corona, the corona, the COVID is one, is just one of the, mem is just a member of the coronavirus family, right? And the coronaviruses account for, they, 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 they cause the common, common cold. We do get common cold here. So would you say that our temperature is not able to keep the common cold from coming to us? No. We do, have, we do suffer common cold in Nigeria. So the truth of the matter is what we do know now is that the virus on surfaces can actually, um, can actually persist for quite a bit. In vivo, that's within the system. <laughs> I'm not, very few studies have come up with anything. And the truth of the matter, I think we, we, should, we should move away from that comfortable mindset of thinking that we are safe because we are in this environment and be more prepared, more proactive and ready. Okay, is there any other meat you would like to talk about quickly before we move on to something Oh yeah, else? then, you know, some people think that the number of masks, when you wear more masks, Multiple put, masks. yeah, 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 but then that's not very true. Um, some feel you should use alcohol or use drink salt water, that will kill you. Um, there was one I heard recently, what was it about now? Okay, it's that if you smoke, if you smoke, you, you, you get in some more heat into your body system. So Unfortunately, you're going to die before COVID <laughs> even gets to you. So yes, yeah, some of these meat are also some of the things we need to dispel. And that is where information is critical, right? Information is critical. So I think it's something we need to speak a whole lot more about and give people factual and actual information. The truth of the matter is because you know our environment, you can't stop people from having espionage theories and very great concepts. Oh, yes. <laughs> but you can help by giving them the right correct information. information. Uh, before I let you go, your quick thoughts on the ban uh, by America and, you know, restricting movement and all of that. Isn't it time Nigeria takes a similar? Do we have to wait until we have more cases? Well, I would say that countries that do this are doing this because they have learned from others. Um, Japan, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Taiwan. No, no. They, 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 they went through SARS in 2003. And so they've learned a lot of lessons. They also watched China and saw that when China started locking down Wuhan and then containing, trying to contain and keep people from coming in contact with each other, that, they be, that was when they started having some progress. They also, because they learned from them, they decided to be smart and then do what is best Should for their people. It? Should we do it? Well, we also need to look at what we have in place here before we do it. When they do these things, then they have, they have, they have, they have things to sustain them when they lock themselves up. The question is, do we? Do we have factories we can, we can revert to to produce the things we have to bring in from outside? Do we have capacity? Do we have, we, we need to do things based on our own scenario. So if we cannot shut down, um, uh, shut down people, ban people from coming in, then we need to be more aggressive in the kind of social distancing measures we put in place within our country. You know. All right, thank you so much for coming on the thank news. Thank you for having me.